Hi, this is Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Sid Veja of Network with Sid. There is a very effective way to network, and then there are not such effective ways to network. <laughs> so if you want to know the most effective way to network, listen to Sid. Hey, Sid. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Hello, everyone, and I'm so pleased to be on Fireside Directory. This has been amazing, and Elizabeth, you're creating something that's so genuinely uh, unique, and uh, I hopefully uh, it's going to get so so far. Thank you. Yeah, so you do have I don't know how many LinkedIn connections. Uh, uh, it's it's reaching about twelve thousand just on LinkedIn, but if you look at my total Cosmos on on virtual, I have more than about forty thousand. Wow, you also have a best-selling book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Network with Sid was a book that I basically took my 10 years of experience in networking and I looked at everything, right? So, you know, somebody may think, why does a handshake matter? Well, a handshake does matter. Why, what is the difference between a 15 second or 60 second pitch? All of these small things matter. And so all of this data is in a very brief guide that's called Network with Sid. That's my book and it was actually a number one uh, new release in the business development category of Amazon. So I'm pretty excited and thrilled to be a best-selling author. I bought it, but I haven't gotten it yet. I bought the hard copy. I could have got it on my Kindle, but I books like that, I like the hard copy because I like yeah. the dog ear, the pages and, yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm anxiously awaiting it. No, this has been good. And I, I'm a regular speaker at various colleges and universities and associations. And uh, to be honest, you know, I, I've been giving out my book in a different format for such a long time. So having the book now, I can provide it. And you know what I tell people right now that have been buying the book and, and, and have it, is just take it along with you when you're ready to network or just have it ready for you to network as well. Because what's gonna be is you might see something in there and that'll help you create that conversation. And networking can be difficult. And some, some people are very good at it yeah. and they're natural extroverts. And Agreed. I don't find it that difficult myself. It depends on the situation though. Yeah. And for, for people who are not natural extroverts and talking a lot and all this stuff like me, it's really hard. So yeah. So, so one thing I, I you know, and, and it's very interesting you bring that up because actually um, I did a, I did a keynote speech last year and I brought a bookmark with me and there were the four guides, pretty much the tips, just four tips that lead somebody to coming into an event, they don't know anyone, to walking out with potentially follow-ups, all right? And, and the first one really is just have your pitch ready, right? You gotta have some type of a pitch ready. You can't just walk in and say, hi, my name is Sid. And the person gonna say, so why are you here, right? The second one is that find people that you, they're just standing alone or on a virtual side, right? You know, I use a uh, virtual event all the time and I'm at them, right? And I'm not talking about the ones that are on Zoom and so forth. There are other services out there, but you can see people that are a little bit more shy. Approach them and say, hey, my name is Sid. I'm a networking expert and a best-selling author. What is your name? Right? And talk to them. The third thing I tell people is that when you're coming to any type of event, right, have some data ready about the event, about the industry, do not talk about weather, please, no one cares. And please don't stay out of politics and sports because people actually bring up sports quite often. And frankly speaking, uh, this has been a research study that I've actually reviewed. Sports is actually one of the deterrents in a conversation because people similar to politics have their opinions on sports and teams and things like that. So I tell people, bring up conversations tied to the industry that you're going to, to the event for, right? Talk about, hey, you know, this is what's going on in this type of space. So this is what's happening here. And then the fourth tip I tell somebody is that as you're walking out of this kind of conversation, ask them about the follow-up and ask them, hey, are you available on LinkedIn message or are you more comfortable with WhatsApp? You got to ask them because how else are you going to be able to make them feel good that, that you should be communicating with them for future? So I talk about things like this and, you know, a, a lot of organizations, companies, schools, and so forth hire me and bring me on to talk about networking because the truth is it's such an easy word that at the end of the day, Elizabeth, what you and me are doing is networking. But the truth of the matter is, is that there's a right way to network and a wrong way to network as you uh, described earlier. Right. And I do think that if you go to an event and it's sponsored by a company or 
somebody, you really need to do a little research first to find out a little bit about that company. I mean, I went into one totally blind once. I didn't know I was going and I had no idea who was who or what they did. And, it, and it's awkward and it yes. manage. Yeah. And, and, and what happens is it's a credibility, uh, you know, thing as well. Right. So you're coming to an event and let's just say some big technology company sponsoring it and you're there and they're like, so did you hear about X, Y, Z? And you're like, Oh, I don't really know much about them. It's a credibility issue. Then why are you there? You know? So these are just some of the things that before, you know, of course, somebody who is a serial networker or somebody like myself and yourself who are very good at networking, they've learned these practices. But when I go and talk to a college graduate, I'm a, I'm a, I speak for a lot of alumni bases and uh, people that are just graduated college, getting into the workforce and stuff, they have no idea. They don't know what they're doing. They just show up because that's what, that's what they were told, just show up. And the truth is that showing up can only take you so far, but then how to make introductions, how to strategically position yourself, all these small little things matter. They do. And I'll tell you one thing that I never do at networking events is I never drink alcohol at networking events. I know there are a lot of events that do have alcohol and a lot of people do drink, but to me, it's work. I'm at work. 150%. My good fortune is that I stopped drinking. So I don't drink alcohol, period, you know? So, um, so it's a whole different story, but you know what? Ever since uh, I stopped drinking, the difference has been significant actually. And the one unique thing is that when I go to an event now and I see somebody drinking versus somebody not drinking, I just know, you know, so, and, and I build a connection much quicker because you know that somebody's holding a glass of ginger ale or salsa water or a glass of water compared to whatever else, you know? Right. Well, you know that they're there as a serious business person versus yes. not. I, yep. It's, yep. Yeah. I mean, and some places do have like wind down Wednesdays, like the chamber has it, but I still don't drink at those. <laughs> so. No, no, no. Hey, look, uh, it's people tend to come for different purposes to an event. Right. And so um, some people come to have a good time to feel comfortable and things like that. And other people are laser focused. In my opinion, if you're coming to an event and you've already paid some type of fee to it, then you got to put in all your best in there, you know? And uh, the other thing that I talk about in networking, and this is more for people that are much more uh, mature in networking, is that next phase of, hey, has your network actually brought you value? Because the funny thing is that a lot of networkers or networking experts that you listen to, they always say, oh, give them value, give them value, give them value. But the fact is, there's another piece to it. Has that person given you value? Because right. it's not always just give, give, give. There's a point of take, take, take. And it's just a matter of figuring out when that happy balance happens. So do you think, based on your experience, that it's best to find a group that you fit into, that you understand what they're doing, and just be a part of that group and go to as many events as you can for that one group, and maybe have two or three groups like that? Or do you think it's best to go to like 20 different groups and so I, I've had both. So um, there's a terminology in networking called glad hander. And it's basically the best person that shakes hands. And I've been coined that by many, many people because I would go to every event and be the guy shaking people's hands. And uh, it felt like politician type, you know, mm -hmm. but the truth is that the best networking occurs usually amongst a two, three type of smaller group window, because now you can narrow down exactly the type of people. And there's a famous quote that my mentor Brad passed on to me. And now I share it with a lot of people is show me your friends and I show you your future. Right. And it's very straight to the point, which means that you build the right type of connections and your future is going to get secured. And the truth is when you go to so many different events, you will meet a lot of people, but a lot of it is just throwing uh, stuff at the wall. And why throw stuff at the wall if you know the type of wall that you're looking at and the thing that you're throwing makes sense, right? So I tell people it's like, you know, start, if you've been doing a lot of this networking to various different places and things like that, that's fine. If you enjoy it, go for it. But you will find on a longer scale that it's just easier to be much more narrow focused and much more focused in within that group. And there's a time commitment. There's a, um, there's a reciprocation commitment. And if that group after three months hasn't paid back, then you got to tell them, Hey, I'm just not the right person for you people. So I, I, I actually years ago, I was basically churning groups because I just wasn't the right fit for that group. 
and I realized that what was the right group for me. Right. And I mean, I go to your networking things because you also yeah. events and you hold virtual networking things, which mm-hmm. I do really enjoy. You have amazing speakers that come on that and on your podcast as well. Right. Thank you. yep. You're doing a lot. I like the people. That's why I go to your groups. I kind of feel like I'm hanging out with friends, uh, but I have gotten value from them and I hope that I've given them some value and it's, it's a comfort level for me to kind of see the same people. And I know that they'll refer people to me and I'll refer people to them, but there are groups where you have to refer people to the other people in the group, Mm -hmm. like two referrals a month or what have you. What do you think of those kind of groups? So those are actually structured properly. They're very good groups. The thing is what I just said, structured properly. I was part of those type of groups where it was very local you know, uh, uh, you know, the person in the group was the lawnmower service. Another person was a local IT company. I, at the time, was a large corporate banking individual. Mm-hmm. So my clients that are in the $100 million scales were just not the right type of clients for the guy that was in the lawnmower service right. and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So I'd say it very, very, very respectfully to those type of organizations that if they're structured properly, they work like amazing. But the ones that generally speaking, they just end up putting a lot of people together. And then it's just like, well, why is, you know, Tony in here and that guy does international stuff. And why is Susie in here? And she does like, you know, she won't even get outside of her neighborhood. Like what's, what, what, what's going on here? You know? And so I, I, that's, that's just, what I could tell you from what I've seen. And for me, even now, there are some groups that are very, very local, but then there are other groups that I service that are gigantic and they're across countries, right? Mm -hmm. But I keep the the data separate. So I won't bring my business strategies from this group into this group and vice versa. Okay. Well, it, it gets kind of complicated. It seems like it should be an easy thing, but It's really not. It's kind of like marketing where they talk about the funnel, where the top of the funnel is everybody and everything. There's more people that might do business with you and the bottom is the people you really want to do. Yeah, it's verified. It's the verified people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, networking, again, it's it's a whole mixture of things, you know, for the people that are listening and and watching this, you know, it's not complicated if you really picture the big picture of networking. But if you want to do it with some level of confidence and actually get something back, then taking some of these things I talk about between the conversation we're having, Elizabeth, my book, right? Network with Sid is on a YouTube channel. I have over a couple of thousand subscribers and, uh, and then all the other social media, it's just, you know, start understanding it. And then this way you can become better at it. Absolutely. So let's talk about your podcast a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You've had, Olympic contestants on your podcast. You yeah, uh, we have had Olympians, celebrities, uh, NASA astronaut. I mean, all sorts of people. And, and actually more fun people are coming up. Uh, you know, we're trying to expand. So ultimately the concept is straightforward. The podcast is C3 Chat Show. That's it. And it's available on every pad- podcasting platform. And now we're actually uh, starting to put it up on YouTube as well. So you type in C3 Chat Show, you're going to find it somewhere, you know. But, uh, but, but it became uh, an iTunes top 50 newcomer podcast earlier. Um, well, actually not earlier, end of, end of 2019, which automatically gave us the award winning title. Not to brag, but that's, that's just the, the category of felon. And, um, and since then, the podcast has really launched and we bring in unique ideas and stories, right? Elizabeth, you were on our podcast. You were talking about your, your son. And, uh, and his kind of journey, as well as you as a parent in your journey along with your son. And those are the unique ideas, right? Uh, the NASA astronaut, you know, for a lot of people, they might think, oh, he's probably going to be talking about space. It's yeah. But did you know that NASA astronaut is a practicing doctor? Oh, and he's done seven spacewalks. Oh, and he's also clown Mount, uh, Mount Everest. So there's so many unique things that people bring, you know, and that's why I that, you know, they need to utilize whatever that thing is, that, that podcast episode, and then understand the data. Because there's something that comes out of that, right? And uh, my book was actually, and openly and honest for the audience, I wrote my book in 24 hours because a gentleman was on our podcast 
and said, look, if you want to do something, you're going to do it extremely quickly if you're really committed. So, but it requires a support system. So I actually built a support system in two days and me and my friend, he wrote a book and I wrote a book. And now that book is a bestseller. Who would have ever thought that a 24 hour book becomes a bestseller over an idea that a guy that was on my podcast. Amazing what happens. So uh, you're a quick learner there, Sid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and also crazy at times too, I think, you know? Yeah. So we've covered the events. You're doing virtual events and people come and they network, but they also listen to incredible speakers. Yep. And you're doing your podcast. Yep. And you have your networking business. Is there anything we've missed? No, look, uh, ultimately I am available for anyone to just have a conversation. I speak with, um, I, I run a small mastermind with college graduates and young professionals that teaches them, uh, you know, about all sorts of different things. And excuse me, I have a child in the background, might be making some noise for any of the audience members. Hopefully you, you being in a COVID situation, you also understand the story, but, um, but ultimately, you know, I'm available for anyone. Just let's have a conversation, right? Check out my calendar and we will put that on the, on hopefully the show notes, my calendar link and book some time to just talk with me. Let's have a 15 minute chat. Okay. So it's network with Sid and the book is network with Sid. And if you type in network with Sid book, it'll take you straight to Amazon where you can buy the book and it's not expensive. Um, no, no, no. This is not supposed to see, this is a guide. And, and I wanted this guide available for somebody that might be in South America that just wants to learn how to network to somebody that might be sitting in New York city that says networking just hasn't worked for me. I need to figure out something better. And this is a guide. It's only 30 pages. So this is not supposed to be a gigantic book like this thick, like, Oh my God, is this a book or an encyclopedia? <laughs> well, well, that makes it a lot more attractive if it's only 30 pages, <laughs> but, but seriously, it, that's what people want these days. They want cut to the chase and don't put in a lot. Yep. I, I mean, I love these books. Yeah you buy where people spend the first half of the book telling you why you bought it. <laughs> no, no. And that's, that's why um, I will tell you, I have a chapter on virtual events and that chapter is one and a half pages yeah. because it goes straight to the point. I have a chapter on smile handshakes, like what? But again, I wanted to cover everything, you know? So just out of curiosity real quick, what do you say about handshakes? it's funny you bring that up. There are three different types of handshakes, right? There's the normal handshake. There's the one that you're holding like this. And then there's the one where it's on the elbow, right? And so there's three different types of handshakes and it goes by the relationship factor, right? Generally, we just go with like this and do the normal handshake. But it, depending on your comfortability and your relationship, you know what? I actually studied a lot of this uh, with presidents and prime ministers and if you watch them and watch how they give handshakes with each other it actually teaches you quite a bit so i started understanding that oh wow this is a type of handshake so now if i'm looking to build a relationship a little bit more stronger relationship i'll go for the elbow or you did right? before covid right <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. Right. So, so these are, again, these are tips for lifelong, right? And so same with the smile. There's various different formats of a smile. It doesn't think like that, but there is. So uh, again, for a 30 page book, you're going to be like, God, like, how did this person figure this out? Right. All of these small little things, but this is not supposed to be a book that's an encyclopedia. I'll get to that later one day, yeah. but this is supposed to be a book to get you or anyone that's watching this out there on the road or, or virtually to say, you know what? I'm ready. Let's get this moving. Great. So it's Network with Sid. And honestly, anybody that's gotten this far listening to this, Sid's virtual events are very valuable and powerful. And he can guide you through how to get into the event if yeah. tech is a little daunting for you. Because the first time it is a little. 100% everyone uh, should check it out uh, You know, through my events, whatever it is. Networkwithsid.com, the main site. If you just go on the top, it has all the links. So you don't even have to scroll down on the page. It's all the way on top. It has, so if you want to come to an event, you click event. You want to get the book, it says book. If you want to subscribe to my newsletter, click subscribe now. Everything is on top. So I'm, I'm trying to make things as easy as possible in a world that we're in right now, you know? Excellent. Is there anything else we need to say? No, Elizabeth, thank you so much for having me. And this is such an amazing opportunity to be on Fireside Directory. Hopefully you keep this growing and any way I can help, please let me know. Thank you.